Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for your comprehensive look at Chelsea's transfer window. The window is closed. I know it's now the 3rd of September, so I'm ever so slightly late to the party, but the laptop is finally working again. We're back in business here on GBFC. Videos can start being released now that things are working. So now that I'm working, we're going to talk about Chelsea's window. It's been a busy one, but at the same time, kind of a quiet one too. It's been busy in the sense of we have sold pretty much half of the squad and we've bought in three players, one of which was a deadline day deal, one of which was also a free transfer for a third choice goalkeeper. But it's been a window that I think has consolidated a lot for Chelsea in terms of knowing what we have, what's good, what's not good, and I think in terms of the business that is done, the fact that Chelsea can break their transfer record to bring in Romelu Lukaku, yet still make a profit in this transfer window, is nothing shy of sensational from Chelsea Football Club, Marina Granovskaya, and everybody in charge of dealings at our football club. So, without any further ado, we're going to do this in kind of three parts. The first part is we're going to look at the players we've sold and loaned out, and all of the different obligations and options revolve in that one. We're going to take a look at the three players we've bought in. And then I'm going to give you guys my opinion out of 10 as to how good or how bad this transfer window was for Chelsea. So without any further ado, we're going to start going through the players that we have sold. That we have with some of them options to buy for the future. But for right now, some of these transfers that have been seen players leave the club are kind of the end of chapters or... The end of part one of certain chapters and we begin by talking about the 40 million euro transfer of Tammy Abraham to go to AS Roma. Now the logistics of this one in Chelsea's favour, I guess you can say, is that after two seasons, Chelsea have the ability to go back to AS Roma and say, listen, we want Tammy Abraham back and it's 68 million euros. And if you look at the opening couple of matches that Tammy's played, things are going very well already for him in Syria. I don't think it's a surprise. I think Tammy Abraham, Abraham has the potential to be a top, top striker, particularly when you just know that a world-class top end of elite level strikers would be coming to Chelsea this summer. I think the writing was on the wall for Tammy Abraham to leave. I'm glad he's gone to Roma because I think it is a rejuvenation project for Mourinho to get the best out of Tammy. Camera battery died, apologies about that, but I think 40 million euros for Chelsea to bring in for Tammy when we spent 115 million on an already ready-made Romelu Lukaku. I think Chelsea have done great business in getting 40 million for Tammy Abraham at this point in his career with that ability to be able to buy him back if it goes the way that I think it's going to go because I think with Lukaku, when you think about the Chelsea narrative of having him, not having him for X amount of years, and then bringing him back, I think for Tammy, it's kind of the same thing. It's just not right now for Tammy Abraham, but once he's ready, it just might be, you know? So let me know your thoughts on Tammy in the comments below. I personally think in a few years' time, we might see Chelsea activate this clause and see Tammy Abraham back at the club. Kurt Zuma, this is one that... Again, there was a lot riding on this Kurt Zuma sale. Kurt Zuma was kind of considered surplus to requirements from Thomas Tuchel in terms of the pecking order. You guys, you guys know I like to call it the pecking order of defenders. Zuma was at the bottom. Trevor Chalaber breaks through during pre-season and in the first couple of games of this year. Chelsea are looking to try and sign Jules Kunde. It didn't happen. We'll get onto that a bit later. But Kurt Zuma's sale was something that we've known Chelsea had been pushing for for quite some time. 35 million euros, and I'm doing most of this video today in euros because the list that you guys can see on the screen, it's in euros, it just makes it easier for everybody to understand. 35 million for Zuma. It's a shame in a sense because Zuma's been at Chelsea a long time. I personally like the player, I think he's a great personality. A lot of the players within the Chelsea dressing room will certainly miss Zuma. And I also think it strengthens West Ham, who are already looking very good. So Chelsea might need to be careful, but again, it's a big sum of money. And when you already look at the fact that we've talked about Tammy Abraham and Kurt Zuma with 75 million euros in the bank, Chelsea are absolutely laughing at this point. We move into Fukayo Tomori, 29.2 million euros. This is one that a lot of people were kind of hung up about because Tomori is a top quality defender. He's still very young. He's Chelsea through and through. 
And I think that people were just kind of wanting to see Chelsea actually bring through one of these young defenders this year, be it Mark Gerhi, who we sold, or also for Kaio Tomori as well. It's, it's a tough one, this one. It is one that I'm personally not too happy about, but I totally understand why. And Tomori's game time would have been totally limited this season with obviously the brilliance of Tony Rudiger in that left centre-back position. We move into Mark Gerhi, who's been sold again. And this one is another one that I find very tough, considering Chelsea didn't bring in Jules Kunde. There might have been a space available. And I think the surprising thing for me is that I did not expect it to be Trevor Chalaber. I thought if there was going to be any breakthrough for a young centre-back this season at Chelsea to actually be called up into the first-team squad, I would have thought it would have been Mark Gerhi after his loan spells that he's had. It isn't. Gerhi has gone to Crystal Palace. Wish him all the best. I think he's going to be a top defender. And Chelsea bought in the money there as well, as we did with Davide Zappacosta, who's gone to Atalanta for 9 million euros. We knew this one was coming, didn't we? For Zappacosta, it's always been a case of, well, you know, if you, if you want to remember Carabag fondly, which we all do remember the 6-0 and the wonder goal. Other than that, there's never really been any moments of brilliance from Zappacosta that would suggest to any of us that his future lies with a role in this Chelsea team. And I think going to Atalanta, Champions League club, whether he's first choice or not, I still think it's a decent move for both Chelsea and Zappacosta in a summer where we knew we needed to shorten down this squad. When Thomas Tuchel gets given 50, 60 odd players to choose his squad of 25 for the season, it's a little bit overkill when we already know that so many of them don't have a chance anyway. And I think this summer for Chelsea has been one of those windows where we've been able to maximise player sales. And it's not about making a profit on every single player because we don't need to do that with the nature of how Chelsea is ran as a business. Some of the big deals that we've made from player sales in recent years means that we just needed to make sales to get money off the wage bill and to just offload dead wood. And I think, unfortunately for Zappa Costa, he was a little bit of dead wood in this football club at this moment in time. Victor Moses, a man who I absolutely adore for that season under Antonio Conte, he signs for Spartak Moscow for 5 million euros. We move down that list. We've got Timmy Bakioko. He's gone on loan to AC Milan. AC Milan paying us 2 million for the loan. And there's also an option to buy at the end of it. Hopefully it goes through. Olivier Giroud was sold for a million euros as well. And again, Olivier Giroud with Lukaku coming in. The man deserves to be playing football. He's going to play football at AC Milan. He already scored a lovely goal. Kennedy has gone to Flamengo. 500,000 euros with an option to buy of 10 million euros come the end of the season. Emerson has gone to Lyon for 500,000 euro loan fee with an option to buy for him too. And Michi Batshuayi has gone to Besiktas. And the loan fees here, I'm not entirely sure if all of this is accurate, but we're kind of just trying to break down and look at the players who have left the club so that we can really gauge whether or not anyone has left who should never have left. There's also a massive list of players who have gone out on loan who at the moment it doesn't look as though there's any options to buy. There wasn't really any money exchanged. You got the likes of Matt Miazga, Baba Rahman, Danny Drinkwater. You guys kind of know that it's been a while that Chelsea have been looking for the right moves for these players. And again, we've only got a 25-man squad in the Premier League. There wasn't really much hope for any of them, apart from Billy Gilmore, who's gone on loan to Norwich. And for Billy... It's a weird one because Norwich, have, they've started the season how many people would have expected with three defeats from three. They might have a chance to get at least a point in the next game because they're only playing Arsenal. So they might turn it around in September. But with Chelsea, obviously, wait until deadline day to sign Saul Niguez. We're going to give you my opinion on that in a moment. Maybe there was a chance that Billy could have had a shot in the squad this season under Thomas Tuchel. I think he could have done. And I think it would have been absolutely fine if he was a fourth choice central midfielder this season with Kante keep picking up injuries, there's so many competitions. Chelsea are going to need to rotate players. So there was an option for Billy, but again, I think as long as he's playing game by game for Norwich, I hope they don't get battered every bloody week. But if they do, it's just not going to work for him. You know, he's going to get used to getting beaten in the Premier League, which is not ideal. But I think at least he's going to be playing every single game. Let's talk a little bit, shall we, about the players that have come into Chelsea. Starting off, of course, with the new third-choice goalkeeper, Willie Caballero, left. Jamal Blackman left the club as well. So, therefore, we needed to sign a third-choice keeper. Marcus Bettinelli's available from Fulham. Very decent backup. You know, when you've got Edouard Mendy 
and Kepa Ariza Balaga as your two top goalkeepers. Kepa is obviously still very happy to be at Chelsea. He seems to be very happy with the manager, happy with Mendy as a friend, and Bettinelli is just another very decent third choice keeper. I think Chelsea is stacked in the goalkeeping position. It was a free sign in. Nobody can really turn their noses up at the quality or the necessity of that one. We move into talking about Romelu Lukaku. And again, we knew Chelsea this summer were going to go all out to spend big money to bring in a number nine. There was a lot of rumours, a lot of talks that it was going to be Erling Haaland. Obviously, Dortmund didn't really want to sell him this summer because they know that they probably will have to sell him at the end of next season because of that release clause. But Dortmund stood their ground. Chelsea made approaches, but never an official bid. And then they went in for Lukaku. And the moment Chelsea went in for Romelu Lukaku, I think it was written in the stars. Romelu Lukaku, if he was ever going to leave Inter Milan, it would have been to go to Chelsea. It's his dream move. He absolutely loves the club. And I think Lukaku and Chelsea is the perfect fit. If you saw the goal that Lukaku scored last night, it is... It's Didier Drogba, you know, he's got his back into the defenders. He turns and then just shoots and hits it so low and hard into that bottom corner that the defender and the goalie didn't really know what was going on. It reminded me of Didier so much. And I think that the connection that those two have, it, it's a beautiful sign-in for the narrative of Chelsea Football Club and what it means to follow this club. But he's also a ready-made player who just we just know he's at the absolute top of his game. He's in the prime elite level of his career and in this moment in time, Chelsea, if they were going to buy a striker, had to buy somebody who immediately walks in to the first team and improves everything massively. And Romelu Lukaku does that. I think it is a 10 out of 10 striker sign-in. Scored within the first 15 minutes of his debut. You can't ask for more than that. And I think he's going to bag more than anybody else in the Premier League this season. Even more than Ronaldo. We move into the final signing. Saul Niguez, 5 million euros Chelsea have paid. There is an option to buy at the end of this season. And this is a very, very interesting one because with Saul Niguez, we sign a 26-year-old Spanish central midfielder who is arguably in the worst form of his career. However, the ability that this man has, he's a self-proclaimed box-to-box midfielder. We've seen for Atletico Madrid over the years that this guy is a baller. This guy can be one of the best midfielders in the world. At the moment, or ever since he signed a nine-year contract at Atletico Madrid, which I think in modern-day football, signing a nine-year deal can only really end badly. You know, it's only really great the moment you sign it because you're like, blimey, that's nine years of a lot of money for my boyhood club. He's been at Atletico Madrid for 15 years. And if I were to give my opinion on it, which I guess is what you all want to know because I've been having messages galore this week, what do you think of Sauna Gaze? Why haven't you talked about it? The laptop was broken. We move. I think that players can get a bit bored and I think at Atletico Madrid, under Diego Simeone, they've had such a way of playing for so long. Last season, he tried to change it a little bit, ended up reverting back to the old style anyway. Sauna Gez, by this point, was in the middle of this bad form. So by the middle of last season, he wasn't even getting game time. And I think when you're of the level that he is, you have that expectation, or the club that you're playing for have that expectation of you. You keep letting them down, and all of a sudden, it just becomes a no-brainer that regardless of the length of this contract or the potential and the quality you have, if you're not delivering, you're out. And I think the fact that Chelsea are a club that are winning things that currently have such a buoyed atmosphere around us, I think it could be almost immediate that Sauna Gez comes in and he sees a personal change of fortune instantly. I think Chelsea has the ability right now as a club to bring that to a player like Sauna Gez, who we know has got the ability... He's got the quality, and I think it's just a really, really good deal, this one. And I've not talked about it too much on the channel because I've not been making videos for the past week or so, but quietly, I think this really could be a great signing. If you talk about a fourth-choice midfielder and it's Saul Niguez, no one's turning their noses up at that. Chelsea have arguably got the best in midfield in the entire league, and we're going to win the Premier League. We're going to retain the Champions League. We're going to probably win the Carabao Cup off Man City in the FA Cup too. It doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe, Jules Kunde or no Jules Kunde, this has been a wonderful transfer window for Chelsea. Trevor Chalaber is basically a new signing. We've got a top quality defender. We've got a top quality central midfielder, decent third choice goalkeeper backup, and one of the best strikers in the world. So for that reason, my comprehensive opinion on Chelsea's transfer window this season is a 9 out of 10. If we'd assign Kunde, 
I think you might as well assign the papers of the Premier League trophy to us now. We didn't. It's going to be very open. United assigned Cristiano Ronaldo, for goodness sake. City are going to be strong. Liverpool too. But I think Chelsea will be very happy. I'm personally very happy with it. Let me know your thoughts on Chelsea's transfer window in the comments down below. The microphone battery is about to die. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new. Catch you guys later. Come on, you blues.